Guess what? What? We have a new speaker of the house. Yeah. Finally. Woo! I jumped on. Now I know what he's ever heard of. Yeah, well, I mean, there were others that were Trump would have supported as well. But, uh, so, um, what have any, what are you guys doing? I've started Section 3, which is political parties, and Mike Johnson belongs to a political party called the what? Republican, because the Republicans have a majority of the seats in what body? The House of Representatives. How many members are there in the United States House of Representatives? 435, and he is one of them. He is now the leader. Okay. Okay, so um, how many of you guys have heard anything about Mike Johnson? What did you, what'd you hear other than Trump supporters? Uh, I I heard that he kneeled like in prayed after. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So Democrats, of course, you're going to attack him. Uh, that's nothing new. Um, but um, yeah, he's a very uh, Christian man. Okay. Uh, so in his speech, uh, he made several references to God, and then asked for uh, the conference to pray with him. Um, and for guidance and so forth. So, um, yeah, he's one that uh, really wasn't on the radar, but every Republican did vote for him, so that's uh, that's good. Uh, and now we can go spend some more money. Okay? Um, they did pass a resolution uh, supporting Israel. Yeah. Okay, and... Um, now we've got to stop the government from shutting down. Okay, so I'm on page 63 uh, in your book. Page 63. Uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Uh, e. Yeah, oh, this is an army one. So what? Uh, this is an army one. So oh, I, thought I, was gonna, I thought it was going to finish your thing. Navy. Oh, it's Navy? Yeah. Well, Navy's good. I already have a Navy, don't I? Right there. Okay. All right. Jay, I don't... Lily? Where's Lily? Lily. Jay, you don't have a card. I don't know why you don't have a card. Lauren. That's you. I, oh, you have one from last year. Yes. Well, I don't think you need it. I mean, you might want it at some point, the number. Uh, okay, so what page am I on? Okay, and what are you guys talking about? Tell me what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. What page are we on? 62. Uh, 62. Thanks for paying attention. Okay, guys, this is a little bit lighter uh, information than what we've been doing to this point. Okay, um, what you need to do, you're on 62, now you need to go to page 74. And you need to get a pen out, you need to fix the Speaker of the House. Sorry, Kevin. Okay. He's got glasses. Now, the reason why I went to press so late with this book, uh, we didn't have it at the beginning of the semester because we were waiting for Kevin McCarthy to be named speaker, and they voted on it for like 18 times, which is the most in 100 years, 
So the Republicans, what you have, guys, is a fight okay, going on in the Republican caucus. And that is you have about 25 moderate Republicans, and then you have about 20 very conservative Republicans. And in order to elect the Speaker of the House, you need pretty much all the Republicans to vote for the same person because their majority is very small. So if you look in that box on page um, 74, where it says Republican House uh, House members, 222 to 213, okay, you need 218 votes to elect the Speaker. So you need almost every Republican to vote for the same person in order to elect the Speaker, if that makes sense, okay? And they had a hard time deciding on that, on who that person would be, all right? Now, the media likes to make fun of the Republicans because of this, but the fact is, guys, those 25 on the left and the 25 on the right are standing up for what they believe in, and that's what we ask them to do as members of Congress. So I'm not too torn up about this like Mr. Wagers is. He's like, the Republicans look like idiots and so forth. And I'm like, well, you know, they're just doing their thing. Okay, back to page 62. Okay. So today, uh, I'm going to do this, you know, kind of go over this overview with you on Section 3, Political Parties and Voting. So these are some of the things we're going to look at. We're going to look at the functions of political parties. Uh, and really the reason why we are stuck in this two-party system, okay? There's nothing in the Constitution that even mentions political parties. They don't even talk about it. They're a natural function of society and, or as Madison called them in Federalist Number 10, thank you, factions, love it, okay? So... Then we're going to look at different types of minor parties, which you can see a bunch of those on page 63, okay? We're going to look at the organization of the political parties at the national party level, the state party level, and the grassroots or local party level, okay? There is a uh, homework assignment in there um, on page 68. There's 18 questions that you can answer from the reading. Okay, I have not assigned that yet, but uh, I'll go ahead and assign it now. Uh, what's today? Friday? When do you want that to? Next Friday. Okay, next Friday it is. Well, no, if you want it done sooner, not like, like, so like if I get the test graded and I put those scores in. Now, I have put in your scores for your homework. I graded that before I did the test, okay? Uh, now, some of you didn't do real good on the homework, but I, I don't know. This is kind of what I saw. Like, somebody did it, and somebody didn't do it very well, and then they shared their answers with other people, so they didn't do very well. <laughs> I don't know who did it originally, but it was funny. There was like six, seven that had the same exact ones wrong, uh, three of them. So um, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I didn't know it was Oh my god. I thought it was in person. I was so confused. I was slightly confused. How long have we been using Canvas? Is this an honors government club? Yeah. Yes. Well, last time we did like the. We like showed you. So I thought it was that easy. I think you should kill me. Okay, you got your phone? Yeah, you got your sign? Take a picture of it right now. Both of them? My book is in my wallet. Well, go get your book, which you should bring to class every day. This is the one time I forgot it, okay? Okay, okay, okay. See this right here? See this right here? This is Mr. Ebright being frustrated. Yeah. Sorry. Someone gets me a day off. <laughs> I'm not sure helping right now. Okay. 
<laughs> I appreciate the effort, though. Okay. So, you know how to use the inbox on Canvas? You have your phone. Are you taking a picture of it right now and sending it through Canvas? Have you done that yet? No, mine's in my notebook that's at home because I fell asleep studying on Tuesday and I forgot to get it in the morning. Well, what we're talking about, Emma, what is up with the lighting in your room when you're taking a picture of these? You have red or is it violet? Pink. It was almost blinding. What is that? Yeah. Well, I was great. personal at this point, okay? It's not personal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, when I put your test scores in, you may want 18 points right after that. So when do you want your homework assignment to do this week, next week? Your 18-pointer. You want to wait till Friday? That's fine with me. If you're busy, you're busy. We're, what? We're not here? Where are we? Am I at school? No. Oh, yes. Okay. Getting better. Isn't it? So, how about Wednesday night? Because you have the day off. Sure. Okay. I'm going to put that on Canvas. And make it do Wednesday night. Page what? 68. Okay? Okay? And you can you can answer them on the piece of paper, take a picture of it, or you can type up your answers or write it on another sheet of paper and take a picture of it. Uh, you can do it on a computer or... Yes? Okay. You all right, man? I know, man. I'm sorry. It sucks. Okay. Okay, so organization political parties. Okay, history political parties, that's what I was talking about. Okay, voter qualifications, why people vote, why people don't vote. Okay, we're going to get a lot into like voting demographics, like which type of people vote certain ways, um, and, and so forth. Pretty interesting stuff. And then I'm going to do a day on uh, polling. Uh, you guys have all heard of like polls, you know, like who's leading in the polls, okay? Uh, right now, like uh, you see these polls come out. Uh, who's if Trump and Biden are the nominee, who's leading in the polls? Trump. Trump's actually ahead in the polls in some of them. Some of the polls show neck and neck, and but really that doesn't matter if you like doing a national poll because we use the electoral college, right? 
So where it really matters is the polls within the states. Yes. And in some of those big battleground swing states, Trump is ahead in the polls. But you know what? The polls don't mean jack. You understand? They just give you an idea. Hi, what's up? Is that a question? Jay, no? Okay, I thought there's something going on here. Hi. Hi. Did you forget to turn in your homework too? Did you did you do it? No. Okay. It yeah, happens. Hopefully it kicks butt on the test. Hopefully. Hi, Jay. The comment section. Okay, I'll look for that. Cool. Okay, yeah, I'll check that out. That's uh, that's an innovative uh, template. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. The other thing is you could use the inbox. It's just take a picture, send it to me, or email it to me, or whatever. Okay. Somebody in here, I like, they couldn't figure out how to do it, so I took a picture of their homework and graded it for them. <laughs> because, you know, that's how the links I'll go to for my students. Okay. Try and help them. I don't know why I'm recording this. <laughs> Dustin, just fast forward. It's too late. Okay. All right. All right. So, hey, let's uh, let's go ahead and hop over to page 63 real quick, okay? And uh, just while we're talking about minor parties, uh, actually, let's not. Let's start taking some notes, okay? So, uh, we'll get to that. We'll come back to page 63 in a little bit, okay? So. Uh, in your notebooks, uh, if you're taking notes, which you should, if you want to pass this class, um, we're going to have a new section. It's called Section 3, Political Parties and Voting. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. We're going to accomplish something today. Okay. So what better way to start political parties with the definition of political parties? Now, we know the faction. Right? Groups of people. So that's what they are. Group, groups of persons who seek to control government. Groups of persons who seek to control government in order to bring about in order to bring about the adoption of certain public policies in order to bring about the adoption of certain public policies and programs. A group of persons who seek to control government in order to bring about the adoption of certain public policies and programs. Okay, guys, so as I mentioned, political parties are not mentioned in the Constitution. So what that means is how the parties run themselves is up to the party. There's no rules here, okay? So when we look at why we even have these parties, well, the, the, there are five functions of political parties. How many functions? Five. Okay, so on your last test, you had questions like name two, explain two, give two. Huh? Remember this, the short answer? Okay, how many functions are there political parties? Five. Okay. You guys catching my flow on that? Like this would be a good question like that. Number one fu uh, function of a political party, number one, is the nominating function. The nominating function. This is of great importance, okay? So, 
we're still in October, okay? But we got November, December, right? And then come January, oh, there's another Republican debate coming up. I'm not sure what day it's on, but there's one coming up. The voters of Iowa and New Hampshire will be able to be picked between the seven or eight or 10 Republicans to see who they want to nominate for their party to run against the Democrats. Now, the Democrats have broken, I don't know, maybe 100 years of precedent here because the Democrats used to start in Iowa and New Hampshire as well. But this year, come January, the first primary is going to be South Carolina for the Democrats. They switched it. Have I talked about this? Why did Democrats break from tradition? Now, see, here's the cool thing about starting in Iowa and New Hampshire, is that they're small states. So a relatively unknown candidate, like, say, Vivek Ramaswamy, right, who most of us know of now, okay, somebody that's relatively unknown can go to these two states, spend a lot of time there, like six months, meeting people, introducing themselves to people, introducing themselves to the state. So the best example I can give of this is in 1992, most people had never heard of the governor of Arkansas. Does anybody know who the governor of Arkansas is today? Okay, it's a she. Okay, her name is Sarah Huckabee. Her father used to be the governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee. He ran for president multiple times, okay, but never was nominated, okay? In 1992, the governor of Arkansas was who? William Jefferson Clinton, Bill Clinton, went on to become president of the United States. Most people never heard of him, okay? And in 92, George Herbert Walker Bush was running for re-election. So a lot of the big names stayed out of the race because they thought Bush was unbeatable. So they didn't run. So Bill Clinton threw his hat in the ring. He went to Iowa. He went to New Hampshire. He didn't have a lot of money. He didn't have a lot of support. But he went around, he met people, and they liked him. They liked this Southern governor, okay? And he finished second in the New Hampshire primary and second in the Iowa caucus. So guess what? The news media, everybody started talking about Bill Clinton. He got a big bounce out of that. Okay, so then when the Republicans went to South Carolina, a Southern state, Bill Clinton won South Carolina. Follow me? So these primaries at the beginning are very important to the nominating process. They're more important than California, which is among the last states to vote in the primaries, which is in August or uh, July, okay? So you work through the 50 states to have this nominating process through these elections within the states to nominate the candidate that the party wants. Yes. So what is Kansas primary? So Kansas comes at the end of May. Around May 30th or June 1st. Somewhere in there. Okay. And Kansas does a caucus. Now. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you a story. About 2016. Okay. Now, I've been living in Kansas since 95. And when presidential elections come around, 96, 1996, Bob Dole, Bob Dole, you guys heard of Bob Dole? Where's he from? Max, Bob Dole? You guys say it like one word. It's two words, but you say like Bob Dole. Okay. Bob Dole is from Russell, Kansas. How many of you guys know where Russell, Kansas is? Do you know where Hayes, Kansas is? 
to west, right? Russell's, if you're on I-70 going to Hayes, you'll pass Russell, and there's a big sign out there that says, home of two senators, Bob Dole and Arlen Specter. Any of you guys going to Fort Hayes State? Okay. Bob Dole was an amazing man, okay? He served in World War II. He got badly wounded. He got home, served in the House of Representatives, served in the Senate. He was the Senate Majority Leader, the most powerful person in the Senate in the in the 80s and early 90s. He was the man. Okay, talk about the Kansas Cosmic Sphere. I talk about that. That was in history. Okay, uh, remember that? I was talking about Bob Dole. Yeah. Okay. Now, he runs for president in 1996 against Bill Clinton, okay? Bob Dole got the nomination, the nominating function, okay? He lost. The, the Kansas caucus has never really meant much because by the time we get to May or June, we already know who the nominees are going to be. A lot of times you already know. But if you go back to 96, when Trump ran, Trump was not a shoe in And the Republican Party did not want Trump. Do you understand this? Like, the, the, the elites of the party didn't want Trump. They wanted Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush was the former governor of Florida, George Bush's brother and George Bush's son. Okay? As Jesse Jackson said, Get out the bushes, okay? He didn't want the bushes to win. He's like, get out the bushes. That's funny. <laughs> you guys have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's Friday. We're starting a new section. You guys are killing me. Okay. <laughs> In 2016, when we got to, to May 30th, it's a Saturday. We don't know who the nominee is. Who's left in the Republican Party uh, primary? Donald Trump. Ted Cruz. Senator from uh, Texas. Marco Rubio, Rubio. Senator from Florida. And John Kasich, former governor of Ohio, there's four left. They started with like 12. They're down to four. Everybody starts dropping out. You got no chance to win. You drop out. Well, the Kasich guy from Ohio stayed in because he hated Trump. He's like, I'm going to stay in in case the people wake up and see they shouldn't choose Trump. So I'm going to stay in. So the Kansas caucus rolls around. And the same day that Kansas goes, Nebraska goes, Oklahoma goes. North Dakota, South Dakota, they all go on the same day. So I'm going down to the Kansas caucus at uh, Century 2 because the Republican Party in Central County is big. They hold this caucus. It's a meeting. Remember we talked about caucuses, a meeting? where the Okay. Um, and Trump shows up. Trump shows up in Wichita for the caucus. So does Ted Cruz. Like, holy cow, Trump's holding a rally that morning before the caucus. So, you know, Century 2 breaks into different sections, right? So, guys, I'm like, dude, we're witnessing history right here. Trump's in, he's here. Okay, and that's all the news can talk about is Donald Trump. You understand? CNN, MSNBC, everybody's talking about Donald Trump. Okay, nobody's talking about Joe Biden. They're talking about Trump. Or actually, wasn't Biden. Who was he running against in 2016? Oh, Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah, that was fun. So anyhow, nobody's talking about Hillary. Okay, they're talking about Trump. So I'm like, I got to go to this rally. I'm going to this uh, MAGA rally, okay? Not because I was a Trump supporter, because I was a Ted Cruz supporter. Cruz, Cruz is my guy. Right here. Right there. Choose Cruz, okay? That was my guy. So anyhow. I just wanted to witness history. So I went into the to the Trump rally. I got in line. There's a long line. You got protesters out there. Like they're protest they're already protesting against Trump. Okay, we haven't even gotten started yet. Okay. And so the media's there. Guess who's there? The New York Times. 
And I got this, this reporter's like going up and down the line talking to people. I'm like, hey, you want to talk to somebody? And uh, he goes, yeah, sure. I'll, yeah, I'm uh, from the New York Times. I got quoted in the New York Times. Standing in line at the Trump rally at the Kansas caucus. Okay. It's fat it's fabulous. Okay. And I told him I told him this. Yeah, I just wanted to see it. I came down early so I could go to the Trump thing. I uh, just wanted to witness history. I'm actually a, a crew support. Okay. So I got in there, Trump, you know, this is called a stump speech. So when politicians go and visit different places, they give the same speech. You know what I mean? So I've heard the speech before, you know, because everybody's covering it. And so I go in there, take some pictures, a little video, and you got the MAGA people, they're fired up, okay? Red hats, it's all going up, okay? But then I got out of there because the caucus is taking place in the other part of Century 2. So I got out of there. And then if you want to vote in the caucus, you got to register as a Republican or a Democrat. If you're a Democrat, you don't go to Century 2. You go to this other place where the Democrats are holding their caucus. Okay, which is the Union Hall down on 235 down across the street from Far Hall, South Watt. Okay, now, so I get in line. You got to show your ID because you got to prove you're a registered Republican. Okay, show your ID and then you go into Century Two. And there's a big mass of people on the floor there, and there's freaking Ted Cruz. I'm like, holy crap, it's Ted Cruz. So I go down. Now, I'm not a big autograph type guy. Like, I don't People are getting autographs and taking pictures with them. And I just, you know, I just want to say hi to Ted. So I went down there and I said, hey, Ted. And he looked at me. So what's up? And then I went and I sat down. Okay. He looked at me. All right. Now, that day, my kids weren't driving yet. Or when my daughter wasn't driving yet, she had to go somewhere. And so uh, Mike Pompeo uh, gives a speech on behalf of Rubio, of Rubio, okay, then Ted Cruz speaks. Donald Trump had given this rally, then he comes over to speak at the caucus. That's what a caucus does. You have people that stand up and support of the candidate they want, give a speech, and then the people vote. But you can't vote till all the speeches are over. Okay? But I needed to go. This was taking too long. Okay? And so I went down to where you vote. And I said, listen, I got I got to go pick up my daughter. And just, well, you can't vote until uh, Trump's done talking. Like, well, I know the speech. He's got like two minutes left. Can I go ahead and vote? We're like, okay. So I was first, first person to vote. And I voted for Cruz. And Cruz won Kansas, by the way. Okay. And one of the reasons was all those people that were in the Trump rally, they had to get in line to get into the caucus and I think a bunch of them ended up getting home because there, there were so many people there. I mean, I bet there was 10,000 people there. Okay, so uh, he didn't get to go. Okay, another time I went down to the uh, to the caucus was Ron Paul. Uh, this is 2008. Okay, I went down to the caucus. Now, Ron Paul, uh, not Ron Paul, is it Ron Paul? Ron Paul, he has a son, Rand, who's a senator from Kentucky today. Okay. But Rand Paul ran for president like four times. Now, he's a libertarian. We talk about libertarians, right? Freedom of everything. Freedom of economics, freedom to put in your body what you want to do with your body. Government has no control over you. You understand? Economic, personal freedom, okay? I like Ron Paul, okay? So I went down in 2008 to the Kansas caucus, and that's where I got that bumper sticker. And, guys, you started seeing people, like, uh, with long hair and piercings and tattoos. And I'm like... This is a Republican convention, right? A Republican caucus, right? Because the Rand Paul people, a bunch of libertarians that followed him, joined the Republican Party because they wanted to vote for him. Follow me? So it was kind of cool to see uh, people that didn't really look like Republicans showing up at a Republican caucus. It was kind of cool. It's like, I, I can relate with these people. I like these people. All right. There we go. All right. Okay. So let's rock and roll, right? Right. Okay. So, um, the nominating function. I spent a lot of time on that. Okay. But you guys, you guys are going to be witness to this. Many of you guys can register, okay, to vote. You can play a role in this. Now, right now, Trump is way ahead in the polls, 
but we don't know what's going to happen to Trump. We don't know if he's going to be in jail. We don't know what the situation is going to be. Okay, so when it comes down, now, there's nothing in the Constitution that says he cannot run for president or even be elected president if he's in jail. There's nothing in the Constitution that prohibits that. Now, think about this. Let's say he gets put in jail for some, you know, some crime that a lot of people are like, this is stupid. Why, why are we doing this to the nominee of, uh, of one of the major parties? And a former president, why are we doing this to him? So say a lot of people like, you know, independents. You know, your Republicans are going to vote for him anyway, most of them, okay? And so what happens? People are going to be pissed. They're going to be even more fired up to go vote for him if he's in jail. I know my wife will. Okay, so listen. You're going to have a say if you register Republican. Now, are there other Democrats challenging uh, Biden? The one that was has switched to independent. That was the uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. Okay, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He has switched to independent. So he's not running as a Democrat. Now, Marianne Williamson still may be running as a Democrat. Yeah. Is there another one? Okay. Yeah, we don't know this guy. Is the news media going to report on this guy? No, because they want Biden, right? So you're not going to hear a lot about it, okay? But uh, if you're a Democrat, and you register as a Democrat, you can vote for somebody besides Biden if you want, okay? Um, and again, guys, we're still... It's an eternity till this election. I know it's only 11 months away, but it's an eternity in politics. Okay, a lot can happen. Okay, Biden's poll numbers are down. But guys, he got some really good news yesterday. Really good news was that the economy in the third quarter grew at 4.6%. That's high for the United States in recent years. That's really good news for Joe Biden. The problem is, Everything is still really freaking expensive. Am I right? And that's what people feel. They may, you may have good jobs numbers, low unemployment numbers, economic growth. Those are all good. But when you go to put gas in your car, when you go to buy groceries, you're going to be thinking about Joe Biden. Okay? But I do. I'm filling up my tank and putting $80 of gas in. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not really, but okay. All right. All right, so you guys understand this. So when it's all said and done, you get down to one can for each. Now, while we're talking about this, guys, it didn't always work this way. It used to be that the party elites, the people that run the Republican and Democratic Party, they handpicked the nominee, okay? Yeah, they would, like, Franklin Roosevelt, the party chosen. They didn't have these primary elections. These are relatively new from about the last 60, 70 years. The last time going into an, uh, the conventions, okay? So as you roll through here, okay, this ends in July. In August... You have what's called the uh, National Convention, where the actual nomination takes place in August. Okay? In 1976, after all the primaries and caucuses, they still didn't know who the Republican nominee was going to be. It was too close. So they had to decide at the convention in Kansas City. That's where the Republican convention was. And it was between Gerald Ford, who had replaced Nixon when Nixon resigned, and the governor of California, Ronald Reagan. The party chose Ford, and Ford lost to a peanut farmer from Georgia, guy okay, Jimmy Cobb. 1976, okay? Reagan would have his day four years later, okay? But today, the voters get to choose. Guys, if the party got to choose, Donald Trump would have never gotten a Republican nomination. 
The party elites hate him. Why? Because he's a threat to them, to their power. They want to be able to control these candidates like puppets. And you can't control Donald Trump. Okay? And they don't like that. So, we got through one. But there's a lot of good stories to tell with that, right? Yeah. Sorry if you're watching this at home. <laughs> I'm